Welcome back to the unofficial guide to NDI. Probably the most awaited tool in NDI 5.0 is NDI Bridge. It allows you to connect your NDI local area network with another NDI local area network over the public internet using a single public IP address and port forwarding. What does all that mean? We're going to learn in this video. Let's take a look. So first of all, NDI Bridge is probably the most technical tool that is in the NDI 5.0 toolkit. So today we're going to familiarize ourselves with this tool and do a live deep dive so you can really learn a lot about it. As you may know, we've gone over so many topics to get to this point. You, if you've been following along with the unofficial guide to NDI, you should have a pretty good idea of how local area networks work the difference between a local area network and the public internet. And now we are going to connect two local area networks, no matter where they are in the world, in order to create really new and amazing video productions. I mean, this will literally allow a video production in India to be switched by a video production system in New York. And there are so many versions of the world becoming more flat and interconnected with video production standards like NDI. So what does the NDI bridge do? Well, it will allow us to host a bridge connection using a public IP address and a port and potentially an encryption key. Because when you're using the public internet, you may want to have encrypted video. You don't want to have video that's unencrypted that uh, could possibly be tampered with on the public internet. We have to take new security precautions when we are outside of our local area network. The other thing that NDI Bridge will do is it will take an entire group of video sources on your local area network and connect them over the public internet. So we have a host connection and we have a join connection. So the host does need to have a public IP address and an, a port available set up with port forwarding to bring the video in and actually send video out. It's bi-directional. So the host does a little bit of the setup work and then anyone in the world can be given the join information and send and receive video. It's two-way, it's bi-directional. So we can share entire groups of NDI video sources and still maintain all of the great capabilities of NDI, meaning alpha channel video, PTZ control, KVM, it's as if both connections are on the same local area network using the bridge. Now, essentially, just to give you an example, we might have replay and graphics in Los Angeles. We might have a production studio in San Antonio where New Tech is from, and we might have an audio producer in New York. We can connect entire networks over the public internet anywhere in the world. and That's what makes this so incredible. Now, when you first launch NDI Bridge, it will do a compatibility check on the computer that's hosting the bridge. And it's important to think about the bridge, not just as an app or a piece of software, but really as almost a server, because you can't run NDI bridge with nothing. You need a computer that's powerful enough to do all of the encoding and decoding that is necessary to make this happen. So if you want to send 10, 20, 30 NDI sources over the public internet, you better have a high performance server grade computer to do it. If you want to send one or two or three NDI sources, you might be able to get away with an i7 or you know, a standard computer, but this is a powerful application and a compatibility check will right off the bat let you know what you can and can't do. This compatibility check for this computer tells us that we can encode H.264 and HVEC, right? H.265 high efficiency video codec. And we can decode H.264, but we have not install, installed the high efficiency video codec decoder for, from the Windows Store. And so it gives you a quick little check. Of course, encoding is taking the video signal, compressing it, getting it ready to send, and then decoding is, is receiving it and getting ready to decode it over the public internet. So the three modes, we, we talked about the host mode, we talked about the join mode. There's also a local mode because there is a need in many networks to 
have a bridge that's local to your local area network, which can transcode video. And we'll take a look at this in more detail. It can take a single NDI feed, let's say from a smartphone and serve as a proxy so that hundreds of people can, instead of connecting directly to a smartphone, which can't host that many viewers of an NDI source by itself, can use the NDI bridge as a proxy. And the bridge itself, which might be again installed on a powerful computer, could then transcode that video and make it available to many more viewers and sources. So it allows you in local mode to choose how it wants to transcode the video. So if you have a high bandwidth, okay, video source coming in via NDI, you can transcode that to NDI HX, the high efficiency version. And that may make a lot more sense for you if you are going to be distributing that out to hundreds of people. So a full bit rate, full bandwidth NDI source might be 200 megabits per second. And you could transcode that down to H.264, maybe a medium quality at eight megabits per second. And now we see really big bandwidth savings and the ability for more to happen on your local area network. Now, a quick note between H.264 and H.265. H.264 generally um, is more widely adopted still to this day, but H.265 provides some additional bandwidth savings, but there is a trade-off. It will take more processing power. So it's something to consider as you're deciding, well, do I want to do H.264? Do I want to do H.265? Well, can your computer handle the additional encoding that H.265 offers with the benefit being lower bandwidth? And it's really not that different. So um, it's just something to play around with and see what you get the best results for. Now, here's an example of using a proxy to get more bandwidth. Let's say we have an NDI uh, Spark. This is an encoder that takes an HDMI signal from a, maybe a, a camcorder or, or a camera, and it converts it to NDI. Well, in this case, it's happening over Wi-Fi. And as you could imagine, if you have 20, 30, 40 people who want to see that video feed, that can happen over a 10 gigabit connection. That's that 10G there. If it, but if NDI Bridge is running on a powerful machine, it can serve as a proxy to give you more bandwidth because the single connection between an NDI device and 20, 30 viewers is not sustainable from the device itself, but via the bridge, it can be done on a high performance machine. Now, when we're talking about bridge mode, we have the host mode and the join mode, right? So the host actually has a public IP address. It has a port. You've spoken with the IT department. Maybe you are the network administrator and you've opened up a port for port forwarding and we'll take a look at what port forwarding is and how it works in a moment and maybe you've even decided on an encryption key to encrypt all of the video over the public internet on the join side you do need to have this information as well so that the bi-directional capabilities of ndi bridge can work and again the thing to understand about these ndi sources is that they're bi-directional so if the join side is using one of the NDI sources, well, it will show up with the tally lights that are working with it. It will show up as being able to be controlled with PTZ control. If you're using a screen capture on a computer and you're on the far end side of the join, you can enable KVM control. You can take control of these NDI sources with video and, cam and control. So, a really important topic to understand about NDI Bridge. And this is something that you'll learn more about in our video with NDI Access Manager is that you can take an entire group of video sources. Now, how do you create a group of NDI sources? You can use NDI Access Manager. And you can take individual devices and put them on an NDI group, or you can create groups of, of multiple NDI sources and manage who they are visible to. So we can take an entire NDI group and say, hey, NDI Bridge, take this whole group and make it available to the far end. We go through that public IP address and the port over the public internet. 
and we join it with an, another bridge with another local area network. Now, when we do that, we have the opportunity to transcode the video. So if we've got all really high bandwidth, full bandwidth sources with NDI, it could take gigabits of upload and download speeds to connect these two networks. So we may decide to transcode all the video sources into NDI HX, high efficiency, in order to manage the bandwidth that's available using a technology called reliable UDP. Now, what is port forwarding? This is an important thing to understand. Port forwarding is the ability to take a port on your router. The router is what connects your local area network to the internet and say, hey, this port, we are going to forward the traffic into our local area network to the internal port on our local area network. It, there are a lot of information on, at portforward.com that you can use to set up port forwarding. Now, to look at some of the more technical details, and I want to thank John Mahoney from Streaming Alchemy to kind of, for sharing a lot of this. NDI Bridge uses reliable user data gram protocol as a transport method. It's a point-to-point -point protocol. It's going to require that public IP address. We cannot use the bridge without it. If you don't have a public IP address, you're not sure how to do port forwarding, NDI Remote, which we have a video on, is probably easier for you to use to send video from a remote location into your NDI production. It supports multiple connections over a single port. So just need one port, just one public IP address and one port. Uh, NDI sources get placed in groups and then they're made available as their individual NDI sources on the far end. And it works with both NDI and HX. Now, because the NDI launcher is so awesome, I wanna look at this together with you guys of and multiple NDI sources on a local area network and another local area network literally using the public internet. There's the bridge host and there's the bridge client. Now what we're showing here is another bridge client joining the host. So it's a topic that we haven't discussed yet is you can have multiple clients joining a host at the same time. But again, you will need a pretty fast high performance PC to do all of this. We can't just do this on a simple laptop likely. When we run NDI Bridge, which is something we haven't done yet, via the launcher, I can just click the NDI Bridge button and boom, the compatibility check comes up. So we know we're not gonna be decoding an HEVC. So I could do that, I could set that up, but I have not done that yet. Here are the three modes. And just checking out encoder mode as an example here, here's all the settings. What do we want to do from a transcoding perspective? Do we want to do high, medium, or low? And just to give you kind of like a spot check, HEVC at medium is 5.5 megabits. H.264 is 8. So we're seeing about a 25% bandwidth savings on H.264, but it does come with a processing power um, usage additional. So to share your bridge with others, you will need to figure out what is the group that you want to share. And, and by default, that will be public, meaning all NDI sources that are set to public. Every single NDI source by default is set to public. But if you've started to use NDI Access Manager, you realize that you might wanna have different groups so that you can manage the access. And this allows you to share maybe a smaller group. Maybe you can't send every single NDI source on your network to, and you don't want to, it's just too much bandwidth. Well, then you would set up a smaller group of sources to send. And that, that's a, probably a key thing to understand with using Bridge successfully. You're going to name your Bridge, you're going to put everything in, and you're going to set up port forwarding. And NDI is now making this very easy with a nice little tutorial here on how this all works. Once you've set up your encoder settings, you can actually see the bandwidth that's going to be used. And you should be understanding the bandwidth, not on your local area network, over the public internet, via your internet service provider. That's what you're gonna be using. And it's gonna give you a status to let you know how things are working. When you're ready, you can hit the start button and you are now a host. Now, NDI Bridge is very intelligent. Until someone connects to that bridge, it's not gonna be using any of your bandwidth. But when we go ahead 
and hit the join button, someone is going to figure out what groups do they want to share with you. Is it all of their NDI sources via public or a smaller subset of their NDI sources in a different group? We're going to have a bridge name, the IP address, the port, and the encryption key, which will all need to be shared with the far end. And then, of course, the local mode, which is for larger networks that are leveraging NDI to serve video on the local area network. This now gives us the ability to transcode those NDI streams and deliver them in a more efficient fashion. So that is our overview of NDI Bridge. I hope that was helpful. There is a chapter dedicated to NDI Bridge on in the book, so take a peek at that. Hopefully this was helpful. Let us know if you have any questions about NDI Bridge. And if you truly want to use it successfully, you will need to learn how to use NDI Access Manager, which we'll review in the next video.